Hello and welcome to this video on the partially true idea that vodka is made from potatoes. Historically, vodka was not made from potatoes. In fact, vodka predates potatoes by at least several centuries in Europe. It can be distilled from anything with enough sugar or starch to produce a fermentable mash. Grains are the most common, and probably oldest, source for these sugars. The image of vodka made from potatoes appears to be a Cold War tale told to tout the supremacy of non-communist countries. It gave the image of a cheap, nasty drink made by the poor, desperate and destitute communists. This is not to say that potato cannot be turned into vodka. It is, after all, a giant source of starch. Starch can be broken down into fermentable saccharides, which can then be distilled, turning them into vodka. If you want to try making vodka from potato, you can, and the recipe that we've found in several cases has the following approximate ratios. One part barley, five parts potato, bread yeast, and roughly five litres of water. Although the recipes aren't entirely clear, it looks like you'll be making it up to five litres and scaling if you want to brew more. The first process is to clean your potatoes. Cut them into small pieces. The smaller they are, the quicker they will cook. Boil them for about 20 minutes. Mash them and then strain any liquid from this process. You then want to add the solid material to a large pot and add water to this. Keep heating this until you hit about 60 degrees Celsius, 140 degrees Fahrenheit or thereabouts. This is the same as you would for mashing for beer. You then add your barley to this. The barley, much like with beer, should begin to have its amylases break down the long starch chains. That's one reason why you're adding the barley. You take the barley amylases which break down the barley starch chains, but also work on the potato starch chains, which have already been weakened by being heated. You raise this to 65 degrees Celsius or 150 degrees Fahrenheit and continue to keep this going for about an hour. At the end of this time, you raise it to approximately 160 degrees Fahrenheit or 70 degrees Celsius to denature the enzymes. At the end of this, you should be able to take the liquid out and the liquid should have a specific gravity around 1.065. If you don't have that particular measure, that's not necessarily an issue. You can add standard table sugar to your mash in order to get that particular specific gravity. Siphon off the contents of what you've just made into your fermenter. You want to try and remove as much of the solid material as possible. You can then pitch your yeast into it, seal up the fermenter, and you have your fermentation going. The next stage after this is more or less in line with most distillations. Transfer the contents of the fermentation or your wash into your still. Preferably, try to avoid moving any of the solids, that is the sediment in the bottom of the fermenter, into your still. Passing it through a fine filter can sometimes be effective for this, but if you're careful, it shouldn't be necessary. What you should now have is a liquid alcohol that can be concentrated. If using a column still, and we do recommend this for the most part, run it until it reaches approximately 88 degrees. As with all distillations, discard the first 100 milliliters that come out of the still. These are your four shots and will contain any notably adverse contents the concerning ones being methanol in particular. 
Once it gets to 88 degrees Celsius, you now have extracted all the alcohol you effectively can. If you're going to do it the alternative way, which is the method used to produce more, let's say, flavoured vodka, you can use a pot still. The pot still methodology is the same as what we've previously described. That is, run it until it hits 88 degrees Celsius, but break it down into 100 milliliter sections or fractions. Discard the first 100 again, as these will contain undesirable elements, and then you will need to blend the appropriate contents of each fraction you have made, or each cut that you have made. If in the making of your fermentation you've been keeping careful track of your gravity measurements, you should have a, an approximate original gravity, final gravity, and alcohol as shown here. If your original gravity wasn't as you see here, you should have added sugar to modify it to be at this point. You then have a vodka grain mash next to it, and vodka from an ethanol wash, these being almost entirely sugar based. You can see how there's a difference in just what you're going to get in alcohol by volume. Hopefully, having seen how vodka is made from potatoes, you can see why it is mostly made from grains or sugar. Sugar wasn't necessarily in the form of table sugar as you might think of it, but instead sugar sourced from sugar beets, perhaps corn, and other places that don't immediately come to mind as things you can get sugar from. There is another factor to consider, at least throughout a large part of the Soviet era. Potatoes were a staple crop, but then again, your staple crop may not be something that you actually held on to. The government may take it and put you in a position of famine. We've touched on this in the past with Lychenko and his interesting opinions about genetics. In many cases, the Soviet farmers would probably have preferred to keep their potatoes and use it better as a food. The only reason they would be making vodka from potatoes would have been a time of incredible plenty when they would have been able to convert it to alcohol, both as a luxury and as a more useful application of the excess food that they simply could not consume, store or convert into something that made them a profit. This is largely why the image of Vodka being made from potatoes is very much a Western, let's say, propaganda piece. The actual amount of available potatoes may not have been that great. They certainly weren't available in the luxury quantities all the time where making vodka from it would have been sensible. And there are preferable uses, possibly the production of meat feeding them to animals over winter, and other things that make more sense, especially given the relatively low yield of alcohol for the amount of effort that goes into it. If you want to see how to make moonshine properly, starting from an ethanol wash and going right through to distilling, we have a series of videos, and they can be found in the top right corner. They'll also be linked in the description. This will show you how to make a more efficient and effective moonshine wash or ethanol wash, how to distill it properly, and what's involved. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it interesting, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions, or suggestions that you have below.